Good day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Right, Monday sort of afternoon here in Australia, market still around that kind of $2.3 trillion mark, down ever so slightly from it, so down 1%, I think this was 2.23 trillion, 3.1 trillion or something, so again it's really just ranging at the moment and now we are waiting to see, there was options that ended you know, on Friday and things like that, what's going to happen when the markets open first thing stateside time monday so that'll sort of be later tonight australian time have we found the bottom and are we going to continue to go higher i'm still not 100 percent sold but look i'm always hopeful and <laughs> i always try and remain hopeful because you know imagine living a life where you just lose hope in things now that you know Life is never all just, you know, peaches and roses and things like that. Like there's tough times and, you know, bear markets and just when the market's going down in general are part of the tough times in the kind of financial side of life, you know, investing and trading and things like that. But what I've found is life always turns around at some stage, you know, and no matter what's going on, it can't be just bad forever. Eventually things get better and then they improve and that's, you know, what you're you sort of look forward to and hope for so it's no different when it comes to investing and trading and things like that there's times where things are going to be going really well and there's times where things just aren't going to be going well and what can you do when they're not going well is just grit your teeth and just grind and get through it but again i have to say i'm never offering financial advice that is just my philosophical you know version of life and things like that so that's me all right moving on Bitcoin dominance has risen a little bit. It was down around 39, 38%. Now it's up to 40%. Again, people are skeptical in the market at the moment. So they're, you know, getting out of altcoins and returning to safety if they're staying in the market. Gas prices, whew, $4. We haven't seen them this low in ages. So that means the fear is really in the market at the moment. And people are panicking. And Bitcoin, 48,500. Oh, sorry, 48,885. So that's pretty low. And again, you know, depending on your your time view, time preference and things like that, and your uh, ability to withstand the volatility of the crypto market, 48000 could be a really, really good buy. Or it might not be. Again, if you're, you know, not looking to lose money and you just want to do quick flips and things like that, then maybe 48000 is not a good price to be buying Bitcoin. But the funny thing is, you'll never know until it's already happened <laughs> that's life you know hindsight they say is a wonderful thing well it's not because you know it too late that hindsight would have been better <laughs> if you knew it before it was going to come but then that makes you a fortune tell all right anyway let's move on all right what's done well in the last 24 hours considering the market's generally down we can see a couple of movers look polka dot there four percent rise so there's always going to be well, 99% of the time, anyway, I don't know about always. There could be days where literally everything's down. But, you know, most of the time there's outliers. So, all right, Oasis Network is an outlier, up nearly 10%. Pancake Swap, there you go. Uh, Harmony up, OKB, Polkadot, Olympus Dow, AVAX, Curve, Shiba Inu, Mutable X, Terra Luna. So, there you go. There are some movers. They're very small movers, no kind of big gainers. But again, the market's very scared at the moment. Nobody knows what's coming and so there's just not a lot of money flowing in. That could change literally, you know, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, whatever time the market's open over, uh, in the States could change very quickly. But obviously, you know, weekends are a little bit slower as well no matter where you are around the world because we don't have 24-hour markets except for in this space. This is the only space that has that 24-hour market our market going 700 uh seven days a week 365 66 in a leap year days a year crypto is always going so this is the only market that i know of anyway that does that all right what hasn't fared well then again considering the market's down one percent overall there you go quant's down near's down and near was up the other day i think quant was up the other day decred gala's down a little bit ada uh, mobile coin matic so we definitely have some coins that are down but look nothing really too drastic the worst downside is 11 percent from quant but they were pumping not too long ago and i think like near was green yesterday so again some cre some coins will be green one day maybe they'll be green two days in a row and then they'll be red for a day or so here uh every, every now and then i should say and that's in bull markets bear markets well different story they'll be a lot more red but on occasions they'll be green so just something to keep in mind. All right, what I want to do is have a look at the Bitcoin chart and sort of see where we're at. Now, something that, 
again makes me think we're going lower is we have now set in another lower high so it's just constant lower high 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 it tried to get up there and then it just got rejected and now we're down here now we're waiting to see what happens but again this is playing out now not perfectly when i put this in but it is playing out this way hit a hey, lower high went down came up hit another lower high gone down so up down up and i reckon it's possibly going to come down but look there is a lot of support around this kind of 47 48 000 level at the moment but we're really waiting to see whether it holds and we're getting close to christmas people are gonna want to take some money and take some profits and spend on things people are just nervous in general about all the things that are happening in the world so again for me i'm not going to be surprised again i don't know what's happening i can never tell you exactly what's going to happen i can just give you you know where my sort of thought process is i think we probably go sort of downwards into the new year i think we're not going to fire up until maybe sort of january february ish somewhere around there again i think we kind of travel down to here it won't be exactly like this it'll just be something like this i think we'll have a flash crash and a v-shaped recovery get everyone super excited and then i think we have another really big push down and again cover that cme gap if this happens if this kind of thing happens i think that gets covered and then we really do get a v-shaped recovery from there but this is all based on nothing too drastic happening in the world no you know massive wars breaking out or you know more kind of diseases or something start to take over the world and you know supply chains and all sorts of things get cut off if something like that happens or there's just yeah some monetary kind of thing that comes in that may change the you know financial landscape then maybe we do see this but we just don't see the recovery we continue to go down you know they stop the fed printing but again most people think it's impossible for the fed printing to stop can they taper it yes and that gets everyone super bullish on uh you know the dollar for a while but you got to remember what tapering is it's just slowing down the printing it's not stopping the printing they can't ever stop the printer that is not how it works in this kind of system now when i say they can't stop it they can stop it for short periods of time but they couldn't fully stop it for like a decade or two decades. They just couldn't. The, the whole place would fall apart and stocks would crumble and people would riot and all sorts of stuff. The printing press will never stop. That is the system that we're in. That's why I like to put, you know, I won't say all of my money, but a bulk of my money into cryptocurrencies because most of them, now not all of them, again, there are some that are inflationary, they're capped once they you know once they reach their limit that is it they can't go you know they, there's not going to be any more whereas with money whenever they need more they will simply print more that's what they've been doing for a long time and they cannot stop N not for long periods of time anyway all right moving on so the sandbox they've got a partnership now with metaverse platform blockchain so this latest move is a part of the collaborative effort where blockchain space plans to connect a huge number of guilds and players to the virtual world created by the sandbox so this is really good news for the sandbox now i've been putting money into sandbox and again i, I said this i think it was i'm not sure if it was gala games uh, sandbox or wax i think it was gala games that i literally bought the absolute top it was I, I couldn't have timed it you know worse in some respects if i had have tried but I wasn't far off the top with Sandbox and Wax as well, but I'm not overly worried. Like it's these kind of things, you know, there's so many partnerships and things going on. They're talking about how big the metaverse can be. It's just not going to happen tomorrow. You really are still so early. And what I wanna show you is this. So here's the Sandbox. This is what it's done. This is its entire lifespan uh, against the US dollar. So it had this big rocket up first, came down a little bit, consolidated, and this is where it made its move. Now this is the best time to get in or you know way over here like for you know less than a cent or whatever boom had this big pump i bought it somewhere around here and then i literally bought some just around about here on the 12th back there that's right so i bought it almost perfectly off the bounce here now can it go lower absolutely wouldn't surprise me if it comes down to here around about three dollars that might be where it has to come to but there is a bit of support here but hey, it could get worse. It might actually come down to here, 70 cents to find uh, its new bottom. If we're in a bear market, 
we might be coming all the way down to around about here, maybe 16, 15 cents or something. We can see we got some, you know, confirmation sort of here. Guess what? I'm not panic selling. I believe in the project. I believe in the people that are involved in it, all the partnerships. That is what tells me this is a good buy. Can that change? Absolutely. All of a sudden there's something new, better, and the partnerships with Sandbox are falling apart and everyone's moving on, then different story. And if I have to sell for a loss, then I have to sell for a loss. I'm not afraid to cut my losses if I have to. But hence why I'm not throwing crazy money at projects that don't have history. I put the bulk of my money into projects that have been around for a while and just you know have good communities bitcoin and ethereum been around for ages and they just continue to grow and grow now can that again change in the future sure but i don't know if i'll ever be in a loss for those two but it's not impossible and again hopefully you know fingers crossed i'll have taken some profits but for me Again, I bought sand right near the top. I bought a little bit more here. If it goes down, I'm going to keep buying. And if we're, again, in a truly a bear market, then I'm not going to be throwing too much money at it. But every now and then I will, considering that Sandbox was once, let's just round it off, $8. Right, if Sandbox is suddenly down around sort of 5 to $4, I'm putting some money into it. Can it go lower? Absolutely. But if it goes from sort of $4, sorry, $4 is around about here, I was going way down so at four dollars would i throw in some more yep at two dollars would i throw in some more yep at a dollar would i throw in some more yep and that's exactly the way i will but it'll be small amounts because i don't want to throw all my money in and again catch that falling knife like i said i'm not too worried about catching falling knives as in on the way down but i don't want to throw all my money in at one time and find out that it really went a whole lot lower so again all i look at is it's been eight dollars before it's a good project it's down around five dollars so it's a 30 percent discount from where it's been and if it drops down to two dollars well then it's an even bigger discount so that's what I'm looking at. Right, moving on, Polygon. I mean, they just, you know, there's more and more news coming about Polygon all the time. I really think Polygon is a long-term hold and is probably the coin that I will do the best of, best out of, uh, again, over my lifetime. Well, I don't know about my lifetime. We've still got a while to go, hopefully, and there's other projects to come along. But Polygon, again, so they've announced nearly half a billion dollar deal in an effort to lead ethereum scaling solution race so what you need to remember is polygon is a layer two so it's a side chain it doesn't really it, yeah it doesn't really work on the ethereum main chain they are trying to actually help scale the ethereum main chain because that's what polygon is that's what loopring is they are layer twos and they are side chains they're not working on the ethereum main chain but ZK scaling represents the future of Ethereum, but scalable EVM, so uh, Ethereum Virtual Machine compatibility ZK rollups, they don't exist yet. And they are the missing piece that is really, that, that's going to help scale. Because once the main chain scales, then the uh, layer twos scale even better again, because the main chain can now take in a whole lot more information. So it goes down here. So they are announcing Plonky 2, a recursive proof system that is incredibly fast and Ethereum friendly. So that's what Polygon is doing. So again, I love Polygon. I don't plan on selling a whole lot of Polygon. Don't get me wrong. I was lucky. I bought a fair bit. So at very cheap prices, I will sell maybe sort of around about a third of it periodically. But I'm in no rush to, like, I won't be scaling out half of my polygon because I think the upside is exponential over the, you know, we talk about how far Bitcoin can go, how far Ethereum can go over the next 10 years. Well, polygon is, you know, it's number 20 or something like that. So it has a long way to go. So I will be letting most of my polygon ride. Like I said, I'll take some profits, but I've also got it staking and the staking rewards are pretty good. Eventually the staking rewards run out and that doesn't mean that it's not worth having the pro the project anymore. It just means the rewards for staking it are gone, but then there is no more new coins being minted, so the price will likely go up. See, one thing you need to remember is Polygon have a whole lot of coins, and they are actively selling them. 
and that's how they get the money to do things like this. They have to invest and uh, into new systems. You know, they bought Hermes. They've just bought the Mir protocol, and now they're getting into the ZK rollups. They're also looking at getting into optimistic rollups and all sorts of things. If they don't sell their coins, then there's no way they can do that. So that's one of the things that is actually holding the Polygon price down. And I think staking rewards run till 2025. So you still got another four years, but in four years time, the staking rewards are then gone. And then it is just, you know, there's no more coins that really should be kind of constantly being added to the system because it'll be at full dilute. And then this price really should be able to start moving. All right. X, what is it? Ascendex has been hacked and it lost $77 million in ERC20 tokens, Polygon tokens, and BSB tokens. So again, be very careful leaving too much money on exchanges. Now, if you're first getting into crypto, you know, you don't really have anywhere else to put it. And, you know, if you lose, you know, a couple hundred dollars, a couple of thousand dollars, or, you know, whatever it is, you'll probably be able to recover from it. But what you don't want to do is if you really have your life savings in something, don't have it all in one place. Like don't leave it all, even on a ledger, I'd be very careful about having everything you own on one ledger. Have it split up onto maybe three different ledgers. Have it split up so some's on your ledger, some is on your exchange, some is at, I don't know, Celsius, BlockFi or something. And then again, if you ever get hacked, hopefully you're not losing everything. And again, if you keep up good security, then the chances of you getting hacked, are, you know, are very significant, are significantly reduced. But also, once you get into crypto on that, don't go clicking on random stuff. Any emails coming to you, even if you think they're coming from whoever it says they are, take note of the email, delete it. You know, make sure you've bookmark the actual page of that site. So again, maybe Binance sends you an email and says you've got to do all this stuff. Don't click on the link. Go to your Binance account. It, the information will be there if it's legit. But so many hacks, because we go over to here, Bitmart was hacked not that long ago. It lost $196 million. Now, they've said they're giving their money back, Bitmart, and I think Ascend has as well. Yes, it was. So the company has announced it would reimburse these funds to affected users. Now, I don't know much about Ascendex uh, Exchange. It's easy to say you're going to do that. Whether they're actually going to be able to do that is another thing, but at least they've said they are, so you have to take them for their word that they are going to do that. And likewise with Bitmart, you know, they've come out, but, but you know, that's another story, $196 million. Whew, I'm guessing Bitmart must have a lot of money and they're probably into mining and you know all sorts of things. So they will hopefully be all right to pay that back because otherwise it is the users that you know get really hurt. Hence why don't have all your crypto in one place. You really want it spread out over a few different places. So if any one of them get hacked, well then you've got some in other places. But again, when you're starting in the crypto game, really you're gonna have you know all your crypto on the exchange to start with. And you just gotta hope that you're with a good exchange that you know won't get hacked and that if they do get hacked, they'll be able to pay your money back. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that game train at the moment. It's rolling over again. Unfortunately, I think we're going lower and I'll see you next time.